just watched Nigel Farage's um, press conference for the Reformed Party, and it was it was moderately impressive. Obviously, there's, there's as you all know, I have massive problems with Nigel Farage, and I have massive problems with the Reform Party. However, you've got to give credit where credit's due. At the weekend, um, Nigel broke cover, and he started talking about the the very real threat from Islamist parties and extremism. And he, he went into a lot of detail with Trevor Phillips. Interestingly, uh, P, th this is the, this is the um, collective amnesia of our elites that staggers me. Polls like the one that the Henry Jackson Society produced, I think, in April, have been done for many years, since 9-11, possibly since before 9-11. So the polling data has not changed. In fact, it has got worse, marginally worse. In some areas, it's got slightly better. In some areas, the polling data has got worse, depending on how the questions are asked. But we can safely say that there is a large minority within the British Muslim community that are pro-Sharia law, that are pro-blasphemy laws, that are against what we would call British values or even Judeo-Christian values. Now, the, the polling data is very, very clear on this. 2015, Trevor Phillips himself, and this is the hypocrisy of Trevor Phillips. Trevor Phillips made um, uh, a documentary for Channel 4 called what, I think it was called What Muslims Want or something along, along those lines. You can still get it on, on YouTube. And he went into detail about polling data that had been released in 2015. As far as I remember, and, and I, I'm open to be corrected on this, as far as I remember, he was suspended from the Labour Party for Islamophobia. And now... He, he superciliously looks down his nose at Nigel um, as Nigel's talking about probably the biggest threat to community cohesion and public safety in, in the United Kingdom. And that is the rise of radical Islamist parties, Islamist organisations and people who want to impose Sharia law on this country. And there's a sizable minority in fact, depending on what polling you look at, um, the I think the 2015 polling in London, it was 49% of the uh, Muslim population wanted Sharia law. Uh, again, I'm going from memory, 42% in the country as a whole. The latest polling, the figure that people quote is 32%. But again, depending on how you read the results, it was 32% actually said they very clearly wanted Sharia law. And then when you look at the, the rest of the polling data, there was only 25% of Muslims who said they absolutely didn't want Sharia law. Again, I'm open to be correct on that because a lot of these polling figures are difficult to read. But the, the direction of travel is going one way. The, the truth of this is that Nigel has finally come to the party. Nigel finally gets it and he's finally speaking about it. And it was it was almost comical when... when uh, when Trevor Phillips said to Nigel Farage, says, what do these people look like? And Farage says, what, what, what do you mean, what do they look like? Because obviously, uh, Trevor Phillips is apparently trying to play, play the race card very clumsily, and Nigel's not going to walk into that trap. But he said to, uh, he said to Nigel Farage, he says, uh, you mean Muslims? And Nigel very sheepishly, realising that he just put his, he's, he's, just, he's just joined the party. He joined me, he's joined Tommy, he's joined um, Douglas Murray and all the other people who have been talking about this for years. He's finally joined the party. Um, he very sheepishly said, yes, Muslims, or whatever it was on the interview. I, I, you know. So if you haven't seen the interview, again, I suggest that you, you, you get a look at the Trevor Phillips, Nigel Farage interview. But again, hypocrisy from Trevor Phillips, honesty from Nigel Farage. That said, there's big problems in terms of what the Reform Party wants on immigration. The net zero immigration thing is, is, is very disingenuous. It's one in, one out. So we lose, we lose 100,000 um, uh, British, retired British lawyers, doctors, and, um, and, and school teachers, and we get um, Abdul, um, Aisha, and, and Asif from Pakistan, Syria, and Somalia. That's basically the trade that's being done. But at least Nigel's coming to the party. However, if he'd have come to the party in 2018, when Jared Batten was talking about this as UKIP leader, instead of throwing us all under the bus, we would be in a completely different dispensation. And this is, this is the point of this video. This is what I really want to drill down into and get to. 
If Nigel is serious about this, and all these other people that that basically um, really are in the elite class, let's say, they have massive influence, they have influence within the body politic. We're, to a great extent, voices crying in the wilderness. Nobody really listens to the working class or cares about the working class. Now, they will do when we, when we, when we get ourselves properly organised and we're working on that, and that's what I'm going to talk about later on tonight with Tommy. But if Nigel really gets this, he'll be on the phone to Tommy Robinson. He'll be on the phone to the other influencers who've been speaking about this for many, many years and saying, we all need to get together to fight this, to fight the communists, to fight the Islamists. And I'm not talking about physically, I'm talking about politically and socially. And to fight the far right, the real far right, the nasty far right. They've all been going on the Dili Hussein show and, and um, uh, attacking, attacking me and people like me for years. The real far right. They need to be challenged as well. The, the goose-stepping Nazi scum. And they are scum. And they are evil. Um, so that's what we need to do. The centre needs to come together because the centre ground of British people, the silent majority, I believe the vast majority of people, irrespective of race in this country, believe what we believe. And I also believe that there needs to be a, a, a mass uh, emancipation of freedom, of freeing of of Muslim women in the UK who have been treated absolutely appallingly by their husbands, by their fathers and by their brothers. And that's happening in the UK now. Uh, women's rights for Muslim women is a massive, massive issue, issue that nobody's talking about. Uh, Baroness Cox has talked about it a, a, a little bit. Some other people have talked about it, but no mainstream voices are talking about this. Because if you can set the, the, the Muslim women free from the, from the shackles of Islamism and, and, the, and the extremes of, of that ideology, you can totally transform the situation. Because let's be honest, in every single household in the UK, it's the women that rule the roost. And if we, if we let the, the Muslim women in the UK who are, being, who are being oppressed live out that, that's a game changer. That's a, that's a complete, I'm going off on a tangent, but you know where I'm coming from. The reality is we need to come together and we need to stand together against this great army of darkness that I've talked about, the globalists, the Islamists, the communists, and of course the fascists. That's what we've been against from the beginning, from the very beginning. And we've had these, these far left groups demonizing us, calling us far right, calling us fascists, calling us Nazis. They're the ones that are acting like fascists. They're the ones that are acting in a totalitarian manner, trying to silence free speech. And guess what? There's tens of thousands of people like them supporting the Labour Party. We think about Corbyn's lot. We think about, what was that guy, Jack, whatever his name was, McDonald, I think it was. All these people, all these people, that John McDonald, all these people within the Labour Party who are extremists hiding in plain sight. And another point, just, I'm going to finish here because I've got a lot of stuff to do today. But the, the reality is this. GB News was meant to be the, the home of free speech, okay? GB News, almost every week, has Islamists on the show. They're hiding in plain sight. They're not going on to saying they're Islamists, but you listen to what they're saying. Listen to their dialogue. Listen, listen to the way they speak. Listen to what they say. It's also having hardcore communists on giving them regular slots on the channel. But Tommy Robinson, who is centrist, Without a shadow of doubt, if you look at his, his, what he believes politically, he is a centrist. He is not an extremist. Is not, they're not even allowed to mention his name on the channel. Now that says a lot about the media because that's the supposed home of free speech. Forget about Sky News. Forget about the BBC. Forget about, um, well, Talk TV. Talk TV and GB News probably on a par. You know, so this is what we're up against. There's a lot of snobbery, there's a lot of elitism, and there is a complete silencing, silencing of our, our, our constituency. And that absolutely has to stop. Well done, Nigel. You finally woke up. You've come to the party. Get on the phone to Tommy and let's get something going. See you all soon.